Welcome to Psychologist Talks. In today's episode, what I want to do is compare and contrast, on the one hand, my response to or sort of the information I provide to a common prompt that happens in the work that I do with people, usually identity and emotion focused work, and, and compare that to a chat GBT uh, response. Now, I, I tried to do this a while ago, but I couldn't couldn't sign up for an account on, on ChatGPT because it was full of users or something, like they weren't accepting new users. Um, but I decided today to double check, and sure enough, it's here. Uh, so here I go. Now, as you might hear in the subtext here, I've not prepared for this at all. I have no idea how to use ChatGPT. I mean, vicariously, I generally understand how it works. I've not seen any responses of, of, of what it might say to this topic. So this is really going to be about as raw as you can get. Uh, you know, one of the consequences, though, or one of the issues that could arise is, is I understand vicariously it's sometimes what you prompt it or how you prompt it. And so if I'm not prompting well, it, this might not work, <laughs> in which case maybe you won't see this episode. So, But if you do, hey, it worked. Uh, so, so we'll see how this goes. Um, yeah, so let's just kind of jump into it. So the the prompt that i have is is just about anger and and it's what what is the utility of anger now why is this this notion important first let me frame this well we a lot of us have kind of perverse relationships with our anger on the one hand the, the one thing i think most people know is like some people lean into anger too much it becomes a primary emotion for them and is the uh, the main way they react to emotions in general the stereotype, sadly, is often, uh, you know, men and how men are socialized. But, you know, lots of people can struggle with anger. Well, there's an opposite problem in our relationship with anger is a lot of people, uh, you know, do a lot of work to kind of squelch it and suppress anger. It becomes the opposite problem because anger is one of our primary emotions. And I don't mean like the earlier version of primary. I said like the dominant, like primary is and it's a core emotion inside of us. You look at us at a kid like screaming at the top of its lung because it's not me getting a need met, that's like the seat of basic anger. Now there's also kind of frustration and other emotions sometimes in that, but anger has always been with us. The challenge is how do we learn how to encounter anger over our lives? How do we use it as an asset rather than a liability? One of the challenges due to kind of cultural notions is that anger begins to be paired uh, with this sort of idea or, or this word of it being like a it gets paired with it being inappropriate. Let me say it more directly. And, you know, sometimes this is done because people and, you know, parents, caregivers, early, early attachments are saying like it's inappropriate and they get ironically angry themselves and, and force the kid to squelch the anger. So those are really challenging experiences around anger. Uh, however, more often than not, I think it's in an inadvertent. It's kind of an indirect shaming or relegation of anger uh, usually because there's other priorities that are being uh, you know directed towards so you know a kid shows up angry and you know there's very little time spent talking about what makes them angry and instead they're redirected towards being nice or being polite uh, or being um, you know empathetic or whatever it might be and the consequence is that those are more important, that harmony is more important than anger. So, you know, so why is, you know, why is anger important? Let me get to the point here. Uh, but hopefully that makes sense, kind of the context of why people have, I think, uh, unhealthy relationships with anger. Is, uh, that's often the premise. Uh, but, you know, why is it important? Well, it, it's it's a protective emotion. You know, we have lots of emotions that are other focus and world focus. You know, it, it helps us kind of lean in and be empathetic and supportive and flex around other people. And there's lots of also reasons why we, we lack kind of barriers or boundaries with the world. We'll take in information as a means of learning about ourselves and being critical about ourselves. But anger exists as the as sort of a safeguard or a barrier. You know, you ever see those barriers? Forgive me, I don't know what they're called. You know, the barriers when the waves get real high. They're important to have because the waves aren't always really high and they're not always needed. But by golly, you really want them there when the waves get real high. And so anger is is serves a wonderful purpose that when you're getting too much information that feels hurtful or maybe you don't want to take in, anger is kind of the middle finger that goes like, uh-uh, I'm not going to take this in anymore. 
Uh, anger also can be very self-serving of like, I'm not going to give myself, I'm going to take care of me. I'm going to take care of number one right now. And those are really important <laughs> things to have. I mean, you know, again, in excess, huge problems, but in small intentional amounts, they're, they're paramount to essentially us having boundaries. Uh, that, that, that's kind of the, the underlying funneling of anger is like, uh-uh, this doesn't feel right. I don't like it. And so how do I express that appropriately? That I think is the greater purpose of anger. And so I'm often, you know, sure there's anger management and reduction stuff that can come up, but more often I'm teaching people to get in touch with their anger, that they need to be in touch with their anger because it's something very important. And usually there's, there's been an overcorrection. In the absence of anger, they're, they're too permissive. They're, they, they let too many things happen. They don't have enough boundaries. And so I'm like, let's tap into that anger. Let's tap into that kind of gusto. Let's see what that looks like because it protects us. It protects us. So let's see, see what Chat GBT says. Now I'm going to start with the original prompt of what purpose does anger serve? And let's see what it says. Oh, this is, you know, I, I, you know, I wondered when I, when I would do this, like if it would mirror and mimic me too well, and then I get nervous. Cause I, you know, I have an episode on like, will AI replace my profession? Um, and, and the answer at the end of the day was like, no, it won't. But in some ways it can, um, now understand AI as it currently stands is an amalgam of information. It's not really uh, a relational process. Now, I know people will make it into a relational process as well, but right now it's more information focused. So let's let's see what it says. So anger is one of those emotions that has a mixed reputation. Ah. On the one hand, it can motivate us to take action, stand up for ourselves, and, and uh, or address injustices. It's also like a reading fluency test for me all of a sudden. Um, it can also alert us to situations when our boundaries have been violated or where something is not right in our environment. Ah, oh, look at this, lovely. Also now I feel suddenly validated that AI, <laughs> that AI was somewhat similar to what I was saying. However, anger can also be destructive if not managed properly. It can lead to com conflict, aggression, and harm to relationships. And then it goes into evolutionary terms. Uh, this is, you know, this is like cool psycho age education stuff. If people are like, well, I don't get it. You know, why, why would it be an asset? It's often beneficial to, to dig a little bit deeper and say, look, at a primal level, anger is also existing for a reason. Uh, and that reason, again, is like a fight or flight response. Not again, we, we haven't talked about it. Uh, it's a fight or flight response. And that fight component is important to have sometimes. So let's see if this is where it goes. Anger likely evolved as a survival mechanism. When faced with a threat or danger, anger can trigger the body's fight or flight response, preparing us to either confront the threat or flee from it. Ta-da! <laughs> in modern times, anger still serves a similar function in certain situations. It can prompt us to assert ourselves in the face of injustice or danger. This is kind of looping back around to its original point. However, it's important to learn how to regulate and express anger constructively rather than allowing it to control our actions in negative ways. Therapy, mindfulness, mindfulness techniques, and communication skills can all help in man managing anger effectively. That, I, I am impressed. I'm impressed. I think that's pretty solid. Because, I mean, think about it. The prompt I gave was just what purpose does anger serve? And it, it, it said, like, well, look, there's pros and cons. And even went a step further and, and kind of offered what I would constitute is some advice at the end of like, look, you know, it serves a purpose, but you also need to learn how to wield it. And so I, I, I am truly impressed. Um, that is a very solid response. Uh, and that's not just narcissistically because it said the things that I said. Um, I was looking for, you know, maybe there's something extra in there and it did give some extra stuff too, but, but overall quite solid. Um, So, so let's, let's ask another question. Let's, let's go to, um, why do some people have, um, I don't know how to say this in not, you know, therapy esque terms. I guess I could just try it. I, Cause part of me wants to say, why do some people have a bad relationship with anger, um, or a negative relationship with anger? But I wonder if there's a, a more simple way. Why am I trying to make it simple? Um, or maybe more direct way. Why do some people have difficult difficulty with anger? 
Now, this might not be narrow enough um, because, you know, part of me is like wondering if it can go back to like human development. So let's see what this is. Um, ah. <laughs> oh, oh, beautiful. Wow, wow. Well done. I mean, I'm just, I haven't even read it, but it, it's giving me a list of numbers and boom, very nice, very nice. Um, so several factors can contribute to why some of the individuals may have difficulty managing their anger. And I realized I, I, I didn't, I, I want to check myself before I read any further. Um, I talked about development. Um, yeah, I don't know why I'm checking myself. I'll, I'll just read it because it, it, it did a bunch of extra. And, and I think this is probably the power of AI is, you know, I gave the response that was most salient to me, but it might not be as salient to someone else, whereas this gives it a lot of options. So let me just uh, rip off the Band-Aid here and just talk about it. First one, genetics and biology. Research suggesting brain chemistry can play a role. Um, it's interesting. I have another um, episode idea about, like, addiction to anger. You know, this is kind of the fancy title. Uh, but I wonder, you know, uh, there's going to be some overlap there. But upbringing, early experiences, how anger was expressed and managed within the family uh, can shape. Uh, you know, if it's suppressed or expressed in unhealthy ways, it can struggle to manage in adulthood. That's, that was my primary point. Trauma and stress, uh, that's kind of an elaboration, in my opinion, of upbringing. Because, well, I mean, trauma can be outside of upbringing, but uh, they can create chronic stress. And how people respond to anger-provoking situations, um, personality traits. I love that they, that they responded with this. Uh, impulsivity, hostility, tendencies towards negative emotions. This, this is, uh, you know, this links to like personality episodes and even where the diagnostic panel is currently heading where it's like, look, um, you know, there are certain personalities that are uh, predisposed towards negative affectivity, I think is the term they often use not necessarily the tendency towards negative emotions but that's that's right on point uh with that uh, difficulties managing anger uh additionally people with straight up personality disorders such as personality disorder or sorry borderline personality disorder or intermittent explosive disorder which is not a personality disorder by the way so this might be the fir its first error uh, may experience more intense or infrequent episodes of anger um I think, I think if it was grammatically changed to additionally individuals with certain personality disorders, such as personality disorder, and then like either a, um, a, a comma or a, a semicolon or other conditions such as intermittent explosive disorder would be spot on. Uh, intermittent explosive disorder for the record is, is a really fascinating condition. I mean, it is, I mean, you're talking like, if you think of an angry situation, just times that by five or ten. <laughs> That's what intermittent explosive disorder can uh, exhibit sometimes. So if you haven't looked up that condition ever, I encourage you to do so if you're interested, uh, just because it's, it, it is interesting. It was very interesting the first time I was exposed to it. Anyway, number five, cultural and societal influences. This goes back to upbringing, I think, in a lot of ways, but, but it, I think it's rightfully telescoping out about more global aspects of culture and society. Um, so yeah, expectation of emotions, including anger, can influence how individuals perceive and express anger. Some cultures may encourage uh, as a method of asserting, while others may um, uh, express the importance of controlling or suppressing anger. A great example of this, I visited uh, Japan relatively recently, and, and there's a lot of suppression in the public milieu. It's very interesting to be there and, and not get a lot of emotionality uh, there's not wasn't a lot of emotional valence in the uh, atmosphere. So great point from chat GBT. Lack of coping skills. This is an interesting frame. Um, some individuals may not have learned. This goes back to their encouragement piece. May not have learned healthy coping mechanisms for managing stress, frustration, and anger. Without adequate skills and strategies for managing emotions, they may resort to maladaptive coping mechanisms such as aggression or avoidance. And that's pretty cool. Like not only answering my question, but but that you know that aspect of avoidance is such an important juxtaposition because aggression is more of like a doing uh, action, and avoidance is like a withdrawal and not acting, which loops back to that original question of like people's relationship with, um, or the original question of like why is anger important. So that was the list. Then it has a little narrative down here. Let's see. I, this is fascinating. I it like is the AI built to ensure that it also, when it has emotional content, give recommendations for what's next. 
I don't I don't know what what how they have it set up, but this is interesting. Again, addressing difficulties with anger often involves a combination of self-awareness, learning coping skills, and in some cases, seeking professional support through therapy or counseling. Cognitive behavioral therapy, parentheses, CBT, and anger management techniques can be particularly helpful in learning to understand and regulate anger more effectively. I mean, that's just really neat that it's doing this. Um, I should note, this is ChatGPT 3.5 in case that's, you know, in case, you know, I mean, this this episode's going to age, obviously. So uh, as a unit of comparison, that's the current iteration that I'm using. I should have said that at the beginning. But that's really cool that it's like, gives me an answer, but also is 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 kind of like directing and, and saying like, well, you know, in case you're wondering, essentially, here's some things, again, you might want to do about it. it. And it, yeah, it's doing it in a, in a pretty cool way. And the sort of like hypothetical, it's not like, hey, you should, which, you know, what doesn't surprise me given the prompt, but but I think that's pretty neat. Um, I will say, uh, you know, there, there's a, I, I would wonder when you talk about like evidence base, how skewed um, it is uh, towards the things that you find on, you know, the WebMDs and those sorts of things, which which have a heavy preference for for cognitive behavioral therapy versus you know other other strategies. But but I'm not I'm not upset about that because this is just I mean it's really a good good response. Um, and and I mean just these two prompts alone could be really helpful for somebody um, and encourage people to come in for help and support. I will note a lot of people often don't realize they don't have positive relationships with their anger. It's something that often has to be evoked. So it would require someone prompting around this to get there. Um, so so let's do this. Is there a way, how, how much time I have? 16 minutes, yeah, I still got plenty of time. Okay. Um, is there a way we could test to see if it would get to anger being an underlying issue. Um, shoot, this is, I, this is, this would have been one to, a good one to think about ahead of time to like, see if it, if it, if it can like, um, detect a, a, like a, a prompt that would imply essentially, um, that anger was an issue. Um, or not, not, not like anger is an issue as far as like, overexpression of anger i'm saying like there's a latent issue with anger um the clo- the closest one is usually about passivity um all right i'm, I'm just gonna do like a, a simpler one and see what it says why am i I'm, I'm trying to think like would somebody put this in there why am i so conflict avoidant question mark <laughs> Ah, no, it's doing the same stuff. Boo, 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 boo. Ah, boo. I mean, it's not bad. It, it gives me another list, various factors, negative past experiences, fear of rejection or abandonment, low self-esteem. And these are all accurate. Uh, communication difficulties. Um, trying to see if there's anything in the, the stuff between... Uh, cultural fam- familial influences. Again, some of the same stuff as last time. Desire for harmony. I love that one. It's such a good, that's a good one. Uh, the the prioritization of harmony. Oh, it's that's a chef's kiss moment right there. Well, well done, Chat GPT and avoidance coping. Um, and then again, it says therapy or counseling can also be beneficial. It's like, do they have something programmed in where basically if you're talking about mental health, they're like, and just to be sure, you can go get help for that. Um, that it's fascinating. I would, I would love to know if, if there's something very intentional in that. Um, all right, but that did not get to it because, you know, it, it says like, what are the causes of conflict avoidance? But it doesn't, it doesn't necessarily say like, um, you're not, you're not, um, you know, your relationship with anger might not be healthy, that there's a suppression of anger. Uh, and that is often what is going on. Like, yeah, there are all these messages, but what are the messages doing? The, 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 to me, one of the indirect, uh, forgive me if I'm repeating myself, but one of the indirect, uh, reasons of what's going on is it's suppressing another self state. It's suppressing a self state that could actually be useful and, and can counterbalance, uh, this whole notion of conflict avoidance. Um, 
because conflict avoidance is, is based out of a strength. It's empathy. There's all these sorts of things that are usually at the seat of that. And that goes back to why I like the harmony response. It's like harmony is more important than disharmony. And it lacks a balancing force on that scale. And, and the balancing force on that scale is often anger. And so this is, this is where I kind of wondered where it might lose some nuance. That if you don't know what precisely to ask it, 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 it might not infer terribly well or give a more abstract sort of tie-in for someone to narrow focus on. Uh, th again, I pleasantly surprised so far, and but also not terribly surprised that it wouldn't be able to do that. Now, again, maybe it's about why I'm just not prompting it well enough. Um, You know, if I ask how can I help with conflict avoidance, it's going to tell me stuff about assertiveness. You know, and that's that's not what I'm going for. I'm looking for a more indirect uh, method, but I, I don't know if I can come up with it. Um, yeah, um, trying to think. I don't want to ask like how can I wield anger more effectively. That's again too direct, but. Um, it answered all the questions about how or the context between behind why anger is, um, yeah. Well, maybe we end there, um, you know, because I don't have any other ones on mind, and rather than just kind of have y'all sit and listen to me wonder out loud, <laughs> and I hit a twenty minute mark anyway. That's usually a good end point. So, so let's do a recap. I've kind of already said it. Uh, so, so again, forgive me for likely repeating myself here. I'm, I'm pleasantly surprised. I, I was impressed. Uh, you know, I've heard a lot of good things from people who see me to, to you know, peers in the field that, you know, chat GPT ain't the worst thing in the world. And I would agree. Uh, now, I, I asked it pretty manicured questions. I can imagine people asking it far less manicured questions or less direct questions. Uh, but, but it was cool that it didn't just take something at face value, it kind of expanded out. And, and I would love the idea of, you know, someone who might come to see me having asked these questions before they came to see me. Uh, it's sort of an insight builder. It's not going to connect all the blocks. Uh, I th it's still important to roll through your history and your relationship with, uh, self states is what, uh, you know, relational psychodynamic, what I would call it, but these different aspects of self, the different emotions, and the balance uh, or lack of balance therein, uh, but really cool start point, really cool start point. Uh, but also unsurprisingly, it, you know, it doesn't dig a little bit deeper. Perhaps if I had more tailored prompts, it could, uh, but uh, I, again, did not prepare. <laughs> I just did this on the fly. So I hope this has been interesting to, to see, you know, a psychologist kind of respond open-ended and then see how Jet Chat GPT compares. I hope the take-home message is, oh, good, I don't need to go see somebody about this. I can just ask AI and I'll be good. Uh, but, but yeah, really cool front-end kind of conceptual aid, uh, at least for this particular subject. So as ever, thank you for watching or listening and stay curious.